What's up guys, I'm Sean from SRK Cycles and I'm gonna show you guys the best way to transport your motorcycle and put your motorcycle on a trailer. Now I know you guys probably don't have, maybe you do, maybe you have a trailer with E-Track, maybe you don't. E-Track is this stuff and you put little D-rings in there. I prefer that because I put a lot of bikes in here, but if you don't have that, that's fine. Most trailers are gonna have a hook here and a hook here in the corner. And if you don't have a hook, you can just wrap it around the bed rails. Some spot it's not going to actually move away. As long as they're evenly distributed and you're putting one bike in the middle, you're going to be fine. If you are putting multiple bikes in, you do need multiple uh, hook points for you, to, for you to tie down your straps. And the same thing if you're putting it in the bed of a truck. If you're putting it in the bed of a truck, most beds have, have hooks down here or hooks up here. I prefer to use the ones in the bottom corners. So you don't have to use D-rings, but I prefer using D-rings because I'll pack 12 bikes in this trailer. So the first bike we're going to do is going to do a... Uh, a Harley Davidson. This is generally how any cruiser bike is transported. We we transport hundreds of bikes a year. There's not been a bike I couldn't transport. And in most cases, I only use two tie-down straps to do it. Now these are for my own bikes. If you're packing a lot of bikes in an enclosed trailer and you're going on a big trip and two straps doesn't seem like enough and they're kind of close to other bikes, use four straps. Two in the front, two in the back, you'll be fine. Now the reason I'm so confident using two straps is because I use really heavy duty straps. A lot of guys are using straps that have a breaking point of about a thousand pounds. This has a breaking point of 10,000 pounds. This is 10 times stronger. You could really crank these things down. You could even have the strap being frayed, a little rough looking. It's still gonna hold the bike. This thing's made for like tractor trailers and stuff like that. And it is an endless loop design. I'll show more about that once we do it. Let's do the, uh, let's do the Harley Davidson first and, and then we'll do a sport bike and then we'll do a dirt bike. Now, it's nice when your bike has something you can push it up against. If you don't have that, these straps are strong enough that you can pull the bike sideways and then have a strap pulling it backwards so it can't really rock. I do it all the time when I put bikes in the middle or the, or the back of the trailer. But for most people, just put it up against the front. Now some bikes, let's say you were on a, a, a pickup bed, some bikes the front fender goes over the front tire. And in those situations, you want to put a block of wood, like a four by four, just to stop the front wheel from going the whole way up so you're not gonna mess up your front fender. The unique thing is about these straps, these are M1 Moto tank straps. You can go to tankstrap.com, you can also go to Amazon to buy these. And the way we do this, this is unsprung weight. So instead of cranking on that suspension and tying it down as hard as you can, which is tough on the suspension, we get below the suspension. So the bike can kind of bounce around the top end of the suspension, can do what it wants. Now whenever you wrap it around something, make sure it's not gonna move or slide in anywhere. If, if I put it on the other side of this, this, this beam, it's gonna slide in, the bike's gonna fall over. Another interesting thing about this strap is this is an endless strap, there's no hook. The weakest part of any strap is gonna be the hook. And if something happens, and one of those hooks gets, gets undone, it's gonna lean the bike over to the other side. The other hook's gonna pop undone also. Your bike's, your bike, you know, falling off on the highway. So I'm gonna crank this thing down a little bit. I'm gonna put the other strap on. Now on a big heavy bike like this, the chances of the back end moving around are pretty low unless you're on some pretty bumpy roads. If that's a concern for you, buy the four pack. I'm gonna chop this down a little bit looser on this side. I'm gonna try to straighten it up. What's nice about this is because we're not pulling the suspension down, we're moving something that's not really moving connected to something that's also not moving. So you can crank this down pretty much as, as, as hard as you want to. Uh, some people ask me, have you ever bent forks? Those forks are so thick, there's no possible way you can bend those forks. Now I do leave, I stand the bike pretty much straight up, but I do leave the kickstand down there's no actual weight on the kickstand. I could put it up. I choose to leave it down. That's just what I like to do. All right. At this point, the bike is secure. Let me show you how you know it's secure. I, I, I couldn't knock this bike over if I wanted to. Now, if you did want to, you can throw some straps on the back. Uh, you could loop, loop it around the back tire if it has spokes, make sure there's no pressure on any actual individual spokes. You could, you know, take it up here, bring it down. Make sure there's not a single piece of, of strap or webbing that's touching any part of any painted surface because it will start to rub off. If you notice down here, 
All this is touching is just the, is the metal. Now, if these are painted forks, it's not gonna rub because these are moving. It only, it only rubs off the paint when it's actually moving. As much as I move this bike, that's not moving at all. So there's no actual rubbing going on. Let's go, uh, let's pull this bike off and let's put on the sport bike and then we'll go with the dirt bike. Now, one more thing. These straps could go forward. They could also go pretty much straight down. They could go, they could go, you know, sideways out here. They have to be even. Make sure that they're even. Now, if you didn't have a stop in the front and you're putting this bike on this, like in the second bike down here, I send these straps pretty much straight down to the side, not pulling forward. And then I would wrap a strap around the front or the wheel and I'd pull it back. So it's not gonna move forward or backwards. Now when releasing the straps, make sure the kickstand is, is, is down. You're also gonna notice that when you release the straps, there's no pop because you're not, you don't have a spring tent, you don't have all the spring tension from the suspension. It's a fairly, not a big deal. Release the bike, it leans on the kickstand. Pull this out. Same thing with the other side. Release the strap. Pull it out, you're good to go. Take the bike off. Another thing I do, I also leave the bikes in gear. Now this is gonna be this, pretty much the same thing. You don't wanna get it up here. You don't wanna pull the handlebars down. You don't wanna crush the suspension. If you were in a closed trailer, you know, you could wrap it on the handlebars and then kind of pull it more sideways. But I still don't like the idea of crushing the suspension. It's much easier just to take it from down here. And I know what you're thinking. You're, you're probably thinking this is too low. This is too low on the fulcrum. That's not gonna feel stable. We'll strap it down and we'll just test it. So, so if you do the kickstand side first, leave a little bit of slack for you to pull it on the other side. If you do this side first, just don't crank it down so it's gonna fall over on you. Now I've used these straps for transporting my van on the trailer, my Expedition on the trailer, my Dodge Viper, um, the Austin Healey. Just, these are very, very heavy duty straps. So it's more than enough to transport a 400 pound to you know, 1200 pound motorcycle. Crank that down. You see it starts to compress the tire a little bit. Now you will get on sport bikes, sometimes a little bit of the, uh, it's gonna push out on the little fender right here. It, it's fine, it's not rubbing because it's not moving and it's not gonna mess that up. Shake the bike, the bike's not going anywhere. If I wanted to, I, I, I could not, I couldn't get this bike off without, without releasing the straps. And then when you release it, the big thing is make sure this kickstand is down and in the proper spot. Release the opposite side of the kickstand. Now, now once you, if you think about it, it's just common sense, but release the opposite side. Now, another option, if you want to, you have a buddy sit on the bike and then you just, just grab whatever side you want to. You don't need tons of equipment. You don't need, you don't need big bars that go on the front. You don't necessarily need chalks. You don't need canyon dancers. I've used all these things. I don't use them anymore. We transport hundreds of motorcycles uh, every year for our own dealership. And we found that this is the easiest, best way, and we've never dropped the bike because of this method. Now, we use the same method for pretty much every motorcycle out there, Honda Runes, Harley Davidson Ultra Classics, Rogue Glide, just everything. It does variate slightly on dirt bikes. And the reason is because dirt bikes don't have rotors on both sides and they don't have fender mounts up here to actually grab onto. So you can't put one on this side that's higher and one on this side that's lower. The bike's just gonna end up falling over. So on a dirt bike, you do have to go, you do have to go above sprung weight. And what I would recommend if you have one, you know, you throw a block of wood in here to stop it from coming down as much, or they have those little plastic pieces that go in here that stop it but I'll show you how to do it without that. I also end up using more straps when I'm doing a dirt bike. <laughs> so 
So I like to come from, from the middle, get the suspension nice and, the back suspension nice and tight. I don't want to put too much, too much uh, pull on the front suspension, but that bike's not going anywhere. And if you want to, you could wrap around the front tire to the front rail if you're able to do that. But that bike's not going anywhere. So guys, these are the only straps I use. These are the toughest straps. I have a pair that I've been using for about three years. We use them all the time, multiple times a week, and they still work. Every once in a while, you gotta grease up the, uh, the ratcheting mechanism. Go to the tankstrap.com, or uh, you can see them on Amazon. Go to Amazon and click uh, tank straps. We'll see you guys later. Don't forget to subscribe.